We are back speaking with Mr. Eric Musal, who is the head of research at Standard Investment Bank. Eric, let's take a different trajectory. Let's talk yes. about corporate bonds. Mm -hmm. How is this market shaping out and what are the risks affiliated in putting your money in this space? In I think it, investors have had a bad experience in the past, okay. especially when you had a number of uh, high profile defaults. So we've, we've seen investors demanding a substantial premium and that's why, especially for the longer dated instrument, we've seen them demanding some element of guarantee or some sort of security just to give them comfort in order to, to enjoy uh, lower rates. Okay. But I think it's an, it's an, important, it's an important asset class uh, when you consider the upside that could be obtained and, and at least the scope uh, could be quite significant as well. Okay, mm. so now we have corporate bonds. We've also looked at um, treasury bonds and treasury bills. Let's look at money market managers. They mm. also invest uh, the funds that they collect from individuals in mm. treasury bonds or corporate bonds. Mm. We've seen the one year at 7.5%. We've seen a 15 year paper at 12.5 percentage point uh, return mm. on an annual basis. We have seen the money market managers giving a return, an annual return of between nine and 10%. Mm. How are they getting this return and is there a risk of these returns coming down in the same way that the yield curve is coming off? Clearly, the risk is there. I think one of the important elements to consider when you're looking at money managers is, is to, to really understand what is driving those numbers. It could be that some fund managers are taking slightly more risk than others. Okay. So in, when you just look at the numbers, um, it might appear like they're all the same and they're taking similar risk, uh, which might not be the case. And I think that's why uh, the Capital Markets Authority recently issued guidelines um, in terms of reporting so that uh, hopefully you have better visibility uh, you know, on fund managers with regards to the products that uh, are, being, are being announced. Okay. Um, so that if you have a number, you can know how to benchmark and, and ensure that you're really getting a certain risk-adjusted return uh, for, for a similar type of uh, product. Okay. Because there could be some slight differences which account for the differences in return. Okay. Although, of course, you can't rule out some managers just being better, but the, I think there's, there's that element of differences which one has to consider. Okay. Yeah. So then, if I am a retail investor, is there a value in putting my money in money market funds, or can I be an active investor in fixed income? Well, I think one has to consider the I think money, money, the money, money those, that asset class is actually quite, quite vibrant. Yes. And there's a reason for it. It has very good liquidity. You lose very little value. So, so it's, it's, it's an asset class which I believe is going to be vibrant into the future. If you're trading yourself the fixed income instrument and you're thinking about the level of liquidity, for example, you would have in, in, for example, a money manager, it's it's really not comparable. You okay. know, you know, you're probably going to have capital losses, substantial capital losses, if you're trading a small bond, especially, and then you might not be able to have this level of diversification. So there, there are clearly disadvantages if you're trading directly. Yes. Uh, although one has to consider the fees that are charged, the you know the the overall return and versus the convenience. But okay. there's, there's certainly a case. For, for money money for money especially and for the smaller funds because especially I know for the smaller okay. investor there's, yes. there's, there's really that case All right. if, you're, if you're buying a bond to hold maybe 10 15 years then maybe there's a case for that okay um, if, so if you have the liquidity and you have the patience to hold money for 15 years then mm. go directly you, into the market go, yes but then if for one if you're starting out because i know they take as little as a thousand yes. three thousand the threshold is quite low it's, it's and low. you can build up even up to millions yes and and still and still be there have a, a reasonably good element of return and liquidity so they're quite quite flexible and i think it's worked well for and and generally generally low risk yes. so, so it's it's worked well uh, for for the local market okay mm. so where you sit you are the head of research of uh, of standard investment bank and and you speak to local and foreign investors and you also analyze different um, investment uh, classes mm. so today when you're speaking to investors what's what's your basic message when you say if you're investing in Kenya put your money here these are the risks, these are mm. the possible returns. What's the overall message that you're, you're giving clients today? 
I think we are looking at some of the opportunities which are there because there was an initial sort of concern about our market. But when you look at, at think the fundamentals of some of the stocks, is still reasonably solid. We've had some correction. The question is with that correction, is it substantial enough? Some stocks haven't corrected, like Safaricom, yes. probably because they're going to benefit. Yes. There's some downside, uh, but also they got into the crisis with virtually no debt. Um, so, so our economy has quite some good things going for it. There are some risks. I think one that came to light was uh, yesterday with the announcement on the two-thirds gender rule, which might mean that we yes, might be headed actually. for an election. Do you think we're going to get there? I think initially you're probably going to get into <laughs> judiciary, yes. constitutional, but I think eventually we might just get into an election. Okay. It, 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 it just looks very likely that... So political risk is something that's apparent. Yeah, but I think for most investors now, mm -hmm. I, I think if you're in Kenya, you've probably gotten used to, <laughs> to a highly charged... And we're, we're, al uh, we're almost getting to the tail end of, uh, yeah. of, this, uh, of, the, of the current uh, presidential term. Yeah, so. but, but even a charged political environment... Yes. I, I think has to become a new normal for any investor. I like I think that. Most the charged political environment has to become a new normal for you as yeah. an investor in Actually, Kenya. Actually, it's almost always been the case. Yes. I mean, if you're an investor and you're in Kenya, it's it will always sound as if, you know, like things are getting really heated. Yes. And and I think it's just something as an investor you just you keep watch, but you, you know you don't lose track of your investments That's just true. because you hear a bit of political noise. I, I really like that. That that, mm. that has to be my, my key takeout for today. Mm. So, where do we put money? Do we put money in uh, bonds? Do we put money in equities, or do we become opportunistic and look out for opportunities? Where where can we get a good return for a two three year period? I mean, one has to look at both areas and consider your own personal position from a liquidity risk perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but clearly, th those, those are both viable um, uh, uh, areas that one needs to consider. Okay. There is, you know, we're really big on, at least as SIB, in terms of uh, encouraging investors to diversify. Yes. We've been trying to talk to asset managers again to consider diversifying some their portfolio, even if it's a small port po po portion. Yes. So that now you have a local money manager who's able to invest on global assets. Okay, and so what product is this from your... That's, that's the Mansa X okay. uh, uh, product. Okay. And that's, that invests in global instruments and yes. we are based here locally. So All we're right. the first ones to get under the money manager license. Okay. So that, that also helps. Uh, and there, there are many other instruments that we've mentioned, if you think about the private equity, venture capital, different investors are doing it in different scales. Okay. Uh, they, you know, they're doing it internally. So I think they, 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 we have a lot of skill sets generally in Kenya. And I think there's a lot of push around it. Yes. I think because the bulk of the assets managed in Kenya are pension assets, there's a, quite a bit of sort of encouragement required on the trustee side to be comfortable with New. You know, being like new products okay. and having a bit of patience so that they don't judge fund managers <laughs> on a quarterly basis. Yes. Because also, also affects the decision making. Okay. Uh, so that at the end of the day, you know, we also benefit um, from, from that. But I think as a, as a, as a proper center of capital, we, we really need to be able to push all these products okay. and get them to deliver for, for the people who put their money in, in them. Okay. Yes. Then the final question on debt. Debt, we're talking about... Um, the government rolling out um, issuances for treasur uh, treasury bonds on a regular basis because they do need the funding to run the government operations. Yes. Does this worry you when you're talking about debt and the extension of debt at a national level? I know I don't get worried because at times I hear figures mm. such as 100% debt to GDP ratio in the States and I'm like, we're not yet there. Mm. But the key issue that we keep hearing for Kenya is at over 60%, getting closer to 70% in terms mm. of debt GDP ratio. The key concern comes to how is this debt being used? So when you look at debt, when you look at debt at a macro level, is this a risk factor? Would it stop anybody from investing in this country over the next two to three years? Or do you watch it the same way you're watching the politics of the day? I think it's something we need to watch. Um, the key thing when you consider, for example, the US or Japan, which have high debt to GDP uh, ratios is that the bulk of their debt is in their own domestic currency, yes. so either in the US dollar or Japanese yen. So having debt in your own domestic uh, currency is, is a lot more comfortable compared if 
with if you have a mix of both foreign and local debt. Okay. Not to say that you don't watch how you're going to use the money, but typically, you, you know, governments have better flexibility if if it's in their local currency. So, so for Kenya, the more you borrow and and especially foreign debt, that becomes a risk, even if it's concessional. Uh, but of course, concessional is better than commercial. Yes. Um, so that's something we watch quite carefully. At the end of the day, I think it, it makes more sense that government should not put all the infrastructure projects on its own balance sheet. And how does it diversify away? Try and consider the PPPs, which had their own challenges, but, but essentially trying to diversify away the balance sheet. I think they're introducing toll roads as yes, well. Yes, they are. Uh, you know, so just ensuring that the money is spent well and it has, has the, the right sector. You, 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 if you're putting in money as government, ensure you do a value for money assessment to ensure that you're really spending money which is where, where it's most impactful, okay. both from a tax perspective as well as uh, whatever has, has been raised. All right, fantastic. Yes. This has been such an amazing conversation. Maybe you can just wrap up for us. So we've looked at the triple play, we've looked at corporate bonds, we've looked at money managers, we've looked at the debt as, as a risk factor, we've looked at inflation, and it sounds like all the parameters as far as uh, Kenya is concerned are okay. We're in a good space. So how do we sort of learn this conversation when you're talking about fixed income in instruments? And I mean, what would your parting shot be just to finalize this conversation? I think we're in a good, good space, but I think not, not to be complacent because I think there are significant uh, risks. Um, I think it's just to ensure that uh, we're able to address some of the key challenges that uh, our economy continues to face, especially around corruption. Because, for example, if you look at ease of doing business, we've seen a significant improvement, uh, for example, since, 20, since 2013. Um, position 120, 121. Yes. Now we are position 56, ease of doing business. Um, so there are things that as an economy we've done well, electricity access, uh, tarmac road access. So generally there are things that our economy has done really well, uh, but we should always watch out for the risks and also see how do you build up on some of the projects which have delayed, which we're hoping that are going to drive growth. Okay. Uh, into the future. All right. Uh, and manufacturing, I guess, is one of the areas which has been a big challenge. Yes. Yes. Okay. So good in opportunities. You decide what makes sense for you, what is palatable for you, but yeah. always keep a watch on the risks affiliated with the country as a whole. Yes. All right. Thank you so much for that insightful conversation. We've talked about government debt and what you need to consider going forward. What I hear from Mr. Eric Mosau, who sits at the head of research at Standard Investment Bank, is there's something for everybody. You need to pick what works for you and put your money there. So don't just sit there. It's almost the end of the month. Next week, same day, will be the 30th. So I hope you can do something different before the, the month comes to an end. If we, and if not before the month comes to an end, before the year comes to an end. Put your money somewhere, let it grow, and keep learning and keep engaging with us. That's all we have for you today. Hope to see you again, same time tomorrow. Good afternoon. <laughs>